What's going on YouTube? Gage from Outdoor Instincts Live coming to you with a 10 gallon nano video today. Um, this tank is a 10 gallon nano. <clears throat> um, it is the tank of my friend Peter McHugh's host of the Pete McHugh Show. So just giving a shout out to him too. Um, yeah, so let's see here. We got this uh, nice 10 gallon tank. Um, when people hear the word nano, sometimes they're a little thrown off by, well, what does that mean? Well, typically nano just means that it's a small tank, um, you know, 10 gallons or less. So, yeah, that's what we've got here. So he's got a beautiful 10-gallon reef. Um, he's got some Island Sun A-cans down there. Um, he's got Hammer Coral. Uh, he's got a Onyx Clownfish. A Kenya Tree. Uh, I fragged this guy for him. That's a Pulsating Zania. And I'm not sure what kind of little mushroom that is because I type a little mushroom down there. <clears throat> a little Kenya tree over there. Now you can see that he's got a lot of beautiful purple coralline algae in his tank. Good stuff, good sign. You know, the water's good. There's enough calcium in the water, enough magnesium in the water. You know, that's that's something that needs that stuff to build its to build its skeleton up to continue to spread like that. Uh, same thing with the acans. They're hard coral, stony polyp coral. Uh, they're an LPS. That just means, you know, large polyp stony. So if you're wondering what an LPS means, large polyp stony corals. <clears throat> Excuse me, an acan is one of the many types of those. Um, a hammer coral is also, well, it's in the Euphilia family, but it's a hard coral as well. Um, it uses calcium um, to create its exoskeleton and to grow. Um, sometimes they're referred to as like reef building corals, things of that nature, like your chalices, uh, some of your uh, smaller, your uh, SPSs, which is your small polyp stony corals, which it doesn't have in here. Um, they refer to these as like reef building corals because that's what they do. They literally, that's what the reefs are made of. These animals continue to grow and grow and grow and grow, and they get larger and larger and larger, adding to their calcium structure. So, <clears throat> it's important to know that when you're setting up a nano tank, that everything has to be in check. They're not forgiving like some of your larger tanks are. Um, when you're dealing with 10 gallons or less, evaporation happens quickly. Um, a little bit of evaporation in this tank is a lot. You know, I mean, think about it. You got a, you know, 100 gallon tank, you get a little bit of evaporation, you know, it's no big deal. In a 10 gallon tank, realistically, when you put your rock and everything in there, you're gonna have some water displacement, So, this, and plus your sand beds. So this isn't a true 10 gallon tank. It is a 10 gallon tank, yes, but realistically, there's probably six gallons of water in here. So you have to keep that in mind too. <clears throat> Sorry for everything being so wobbly. I'm actually kneeling at the moment. But anyways, so yeah, with the nano tanks, they're rewarding, they're fun. You know, they don't take up a lot of space. Uh, they're cheap to run, a lot cheaper than, you know, bigger tanks, so that's a good thing. But you really, you just need to keep an eye on all of your water parameters, which he's been doing here. He's been on a very strict water schedule lately. Um, you can see right down here in the corner, he's got a little bit of uh, detritus buildup, which is no big deal. Um, <clears throat> that's something that you can take care of. You can siphon that out. Uh, typically, that's a sign of you know, not enough water movement, maybe you've got too much food in the water column, your cleanup crew, you don't, maybe you don't have one or you don't have enough. Um, a cleanup crew is essential in any tank um, because basically what detritus is, is it's a buildup of wastes. Um, you put food in the tank, the fish don't eat it, it sinks to the bottom, you don't have a cleanup crew to get a hold of it like crabs and snails, and then it just rots and breaks down and it becomes detritus, which is this brown or sand stuff. Uh, it gets pretty thick if unchecked. It'll actually become like a, a carpet across the bottom of your tank. It's nasty stuff. <clears throat> also, um, algae. Um, he's got some, you can see right here where the glass isn't as clear. You can see the green in there. He's got a little bit of green algae on the front of the glass. Um, algaes and things of that nature, nuisance algaes, they thrive off of what's called phosphate. Um, Phosphate is, is just something that happens in an aquarium. Um, again, it's it comes from the form of wastes. Um, you can have a lot of phosphate in your water if you're overfeeding, um, if you don't have good filtration, if you don't keep up on your water changes. You know, you're going to have a lot of nitrite and phosphates. Uh, algae thrives off of phosphate. That's what it eats. Um, phosphate, high water temperatures, and 
if your light is on more than eight hours a day. You can still have algae problems at eight hours a day, especially if you're using high intensity lighting like LEDs um, <clears throat> or metal halides or anything of that nature. So if you're having issues with algae at eight hours a day, cut it back to six and see what happens. Keep up on your water changes. Um, it's important to do a water change at least once every week, depending on the type of tank that you have. For some of your smaller nano tanks, you're going to want to do it, you know, maybe three times a week, depending on how large your tank is. If you have a really small tank, it's going to evaporate quickly, so you're going to want to take some water out every day and put some back in. When evaporation occurs in any tank, um, you know... It, your salt content is going to go up. You may have started off at you know 1023, but because of evaporation, now you're up to you know 1025. Let's say you're still in the safe zone, but it's important to know that you need to check your salinity regularly. Um, if you start getting into your fancier, higher class corals, your uh, SPSs, your LPSs, things that aren't so forgiving, spikes in nitrates, even inverts, crabs, shrimps of that nature, they can die. Uh, starfish don't like it either. If you have a starfish die in your tank and you don't know about it, uh, it potentially could crash the entire system. <clears throat> Sorry, I got this cough I can't seem to get rid of. But um, So when we're dealing with a nano tank, um, just like any other tank, you're going to want good flow. So he's got a nice little power head here in the corner, which as you can see is providing adequate flow to his coral. Yeah, as we said before, there are some dead spots. You know what? That's going to happen. Should he get another power head and put it over here in this corner? Hey, maybe. Um, he's got some good flow coming from the filter as well. So I'd say he's got a decent amount of flow in here. So it wasn't a high flow tank. It's probably a medium flow tank. But when you aquascape, it's important to know that when you put your rocks in here, you're going to want to leave open holes and gaps between the glass and things of that nature. Don't just dump a bunch of rocks in here. Because if you do that, water doesn't have any way of getting around it. I don't care how much flow you have. You're going to have dead spots in your tank if you don't op aquascape correctly, and then that's when you get your detritus build up. Um, so how do we get rid of detritus? Well, water changes is the biggest portion of it. If you get on a weekly water change schedule and you're consistent about it, you're using good salt, you're making sure all your parameters are in check, you test it, you put it in, and you're using good water. Um, you can have the best salt in the world, but if you're using you know, nasty water, sometimes like city water, or maybe if your well water isn't very clean, um, you're going to get detritus, you're going to get algae because there's phosphates and things in that water. It's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> this is an example. I live out in the woods and we have an amazing well. We have some of the best tasting water. But if I was to test it, it would probably be, you know, 100 to 150 parts per million, um, which is, is perfectly fine for us. Realistically, humans can drink water that's, you know, three to six, seven, eight hundred parts per million. As dirty as that sounds, it's perfectly fine for us. You know, we need all those um, hard metals and, you know, all the little bit of what we would call dirtiness when I'm speaking in an aquarium, uh, you know, that's in the water. When you're talking about aquarium tanks, that stuff's dirty to you. But realistically, as humans, you know, all of the additives, all, the, all of the... Um, elements and things that are in that water, the hard metals and such, you know, our body uses, so it's okay, it gets absorbed. Well, in an aquarium, it just causes problems, it called, causes buildup, so that's why we call it dirty water, when it's really not dirty water, but when you're dealing with an aquarium hobby, it's dirty water, you don't want to use it. So what do we use? Well, we use RO water, and basically that just means reverse osmosis. It's just a super duper way of cleaning your water. It goes through a bunch of filtration processes and then they use like a UV sterilizer at the end to kill bacteria. Um, <clears throat> it's important to know that a UV sterilizer will not get rid of the harsh elements that are in tap water. Um, all it does is kill bacteria. So RO water, they have specific ways of filtering it that remove all of those harsh elements and then they UV sterilize it just in case there's any bacteria within the water. So use RO water, good flow, good water change schedule. Um, if detritus and things of that nature start to creep up on you, let's find out what the problem is. You know, a lot of people, when they have a tank, they have an issue that's going on. Well, let's just go out and buy an additive. I'm sorry, but that's not the answer. You could have cyano cyanobacteria, which basically red slime algae build up. It's, it's red, it's, it's gross, it's stringy. 
well, why do I have all this? Well, your water quality is poor. You're probably not doing your water changes regularly. Your nitrates are probably through the roof. You can get rid of 95, 100% of all the issues that you're having just through good water quality, RO water, and a good water change schedule. And of course, good filtration. So when people go out and they buy an additive, yeah, you know what, hey, there are additives that work. I'm saying, you know, if your tank's being taken over and you need something now, that's fine. Go out and get one. But if you're be prepared to do a huge water change when you do, because when you add an additive like that, it's going to cause die-off of all that algae, which is going to be released into the water, which is going to make it really dirty. So it's important to do a big water change after you add an additive to your tank. So good water change schedule, which he's been doing, so this tank is looking really, really, really good. Um, and just make sure that, you know, weekly, when you do your water change, check your filters, check your Fosband media. Your Fosband media is either in a reactor or inside the filter, and that's actually what takes care of the abundance of phosphates that are in your water. So as long as you're doing regular water changes, you can cut down on this, and you might not even have to get, you know, Fosband media for your tank. Like we said before, you want to address the, uh, the issues that you're having first. Why are these issues happening? And then if it's a chance of, you know, overfeeding or you're not using good water or you're not doing water changes regularly, you start doing that and you decrease your feeding. Then you start getting positive feedbacks from your tank and then you don't have to worry about getting all this fancy equipment or expensive, you know, chemical treatments for your tank. So just if you want to start a nano tank, it's, it's a great little hobby. Just make sure you keep an eye on all the stuff that's going on in the tank. So hopefully this helped. We'll be back later with more.